So how can I go ahead and add a picture as a background to a Google slide? You may want to use this if you don't want students to be able to manipulate your picture, uh, maybe delete it by accident. So for example, if I were just to go to my insert menu and bring in an image, and in this case, I have one that I have brought in from I've just taken a screenshot of one of the worksheets that my students want to do. So here's my image and I can move this around on my slide. I could even as a student hit, oh, accidentally delete it off the page. And obviously I don't want that to happen. So how can I prevent my students from doing that? Well, in order to do that, we need to set this image as a background. We need to set it so that um, I'm able to put text boxes over it and maybe move, create counters that my students would be able to manipulate on top. So how can I do that? Well, we're going to go through two very similar ways. It's really just going to be a personal preference as to what you want to do. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to add a blank slide here. And if I want this whole slide, the whole background, to be that image with my 10 frame on it, I'm going to right click on my white slide and I'm going to go to change background. You'll see here in the little pop up box, I have the option to choose an image. So that's what I'm going to do. I need to upload this because I have it saved to my computer. So I'm going to select browse and I'm going to bring in that image. Hit open. And just like that, I hit done. And you can see that now my image has been blown up to fill the space on the slide. I can come in here. It's not going to allow me to move it. I can click. I can't delete. So I could come in at this point. I could create text boxes right down here where the students are supposed to type in their answer. Um, if I want that to show up a little bit better, I might go ahead and select my border color. So the students know that there's a box there. I could create my um, counters here for them to be able to pull up. And I would be able to have this image static in the background. Now you can see when I brought it in, it is a little distorted. It sort of stretched things out a little bit. Um, if that works for you, by all means, you can certainly leave it that way. But maybe you want to have it more look like the original because you want to give some more space. Maybe you want to have a second problem on here. So how could you go about doing that? Well, I'm going to come back to this slide that I originally showed you where my image is just moving around here on my background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this picture where I actually really want it to see on, on the slide. And then I'm going to go to File. And I'm going to do download. And if I do download, I have the option of saving this single slide as a picture file. So I'm going to select the ping image and it's going to download for me. And then I already had, had done this. So I'm just going to kind of save over that one. And then I'm going to go through those exact same steps that I just did. But this time I'm going to use that picture that I just created. So I'm going to add a blank slide. Where it is there it is and again right click on the slide go to change background choose image and this time when I browse I'm just going to go ahead I'm going to grab my picture that I created and then I can hit done so now you can see it's a little clearer it's not stretched out I have space up here if I want to go ahead and add a text box for a title complete the problem below and again, would be able to come in here and add a text box where I want the students to type in their answer. Again, I always recommend going ahead and putting a border around it so they know that there's something they have to do in that space. And then for my counters, I can go ahead and I can come in. Here's a little trick. I want a perfect circle. I'm going to hold my shift key down on my keyboard that will allow me to get that perfect circle that I want. And I'm going to go ahead and fill that in a different color. And because I want my students, I need to make sure to fit in that little square. Oop, I didn't hold down my shift key that time, but that's all right. And then I can just create my objects here. So I can, if I just want to create a bunch of them and stack them, a really easy way to do that is just to hit control D several times. You can see I get a nice little stack of counters and then I can go through and stack those up if I want allowing my students to just click and drag. You of course could also teach them that control D trick. Um, it's a good one to have in your back pocket. But now I have created a uh, activity that my students are gonna be able to drag and drop. They're gonna be able to type all from a image that I have put as my background. 